This is a demonstration of a uh, front end for games that I made using Windows Presentation Foundation. I wasn't really happy with the front ends that I saw out there because they all kind of tended to require a lot of um, you know complicated configuration or they were tailored you know towards specific emulators instead of just being a generic you know, game launcher the other thing that I noticed about a lot of the front ends too is that they all kind of tended to you know look like flash videos or you know windows programs but you know with an arcade cabinet all you're playing you know is arcade games and so I thought that it would be fitting if the front end essentially looked just like an arcade game so uh, you know given that I have a, a Street Fighter 2 big blue cabinet I themed it accordingly I pulled you know these assets um, out of uh, MAME and just you know threw in some you know extra touches you know here and there just for fun so you know a lot of the front ends that you see they tend to be you know fairly static or they tend to just kind of have you know, like a canned you know flash video introduction and um, transition effect but I uh, you know like I said wanted this to feel like it was sort of a game and so you know it has layers and you know some parallax scrolling and all of that um, and, and it's you know as you can see very animated and so um, you know just for fun you know I put in some bonus features too so you'll notice that um, you know the fighters are just kind of you know going through an animation loop there but if I press one of the hotkeys um, I can actually trigger uh, you know some animation on the screen so it just kind of reinforces that idea that you know it's kind of kind of feels like a little game um, and you even have control over uh, George here who is uh, climbing up and down the building perpetually and so if you time it just right you can take out the R-type ship um, and it's kind of a little game in and of itself because when you make the fighters punch each other it makes uh, George stop for a second so you can kind of slow him down so you can you know, line it up uh, and try to, you know, hit the ship there. So it's just kind of a fun little thing. Um, you, you know, and, and so, like I said, this was done with Windows Presentation Foundation and, um, you know, because it's, you know, uh, C-sharp managed code and I wanted to get some, you know, gamepad support in there. I ended up, um, you know, using the, you know, managed uh, DirectX. But there are some issues with it, um, you know, where you have to use, you know, an app config, you know, to launch the program because of, uh, you know, locking uh, issues. Um, so, you know, you know, it works, but at the end of the day, I, I think that the, uh, you know, you know, managed DirectX seems like it's a little flaky right now keep missing this guy you know and, and I also too wanted to kind of keep the presentation on this thing you know kind of nice so when you actually select a game um, I don't have images for all of these but when you select a game um, you know I tried to put in a kind of nice you know transition so it would fade in and out of the game and it didn't just look kind of like a chunky you know Windows uh, you know application launch okay I'm gonna get this guy oh boy <laughs> <laughs> um, oh boy, I keep missing them. Um, <laughs> yeah, and, and also too on the photos for uh, you know the thumbnail photos there, um, it just kind of has like a little flicker effect, so it kind of looks like it's a, you know screen uh, being displayed there. Um, I, I considered doing videos, but then I really just kind of thought about it, and you know I realized that you know it's kind of too much. I mean, I already have a lot of animation going on here. And, uh, you know, it seemed kind of silly to, oh boy, it seemed kind of silly to, um, you know, add even more, you know, visual noise to the screen.
Yeah, so I guess I'm gonna, um, you know, release the source code for this uh, and the, you know, binary, you know, if anybody wants to use it. It was really just kind of made for me, um, but, you know, if somebody else can, you know, get a kick out of it, that's fine too. Yeah, and so, you know, you, what you're seeing here basically, um, you know, is, well, several, several plus layers um, of stuff going on. There, there's basically two layers for clouds. There we go. That's the money. There, there are two layers of clouds uh, that you can see moving up the top there so that they can move at different speeds. And, um, you know, there, there's a layer for the, you know, actual, you know, sky there with that kind of horribly, <laughs> horribly, um, you know, harsh, you know, gradient, you know, that was typical of, uh, you know, older games. Um, and then there's a layer for the building and a layer for the bushes, a uh, layer for the crowd and, you know, layer for the fighters, you know, so, um, you know, so I could do all that stuff. Um, yeah, and also too, when you select a game, there's a, um, you know, an animation, of course, to go with that too, because you got to really, you know, put the button on that game launch, you know, you got to, got to punctuate that. So you can see that, you know, we can have that nice fade out into the game. Um, and then when we leave the game, it, you know, nicely fades back in. Of course, in the video, you're not going to see the game launch because, you know, Camtasia isn't going to handle, uh, you know, going from a, you know, window to, you know, full screen application like that. But yeah, but basically at that point just launches the game. Yeah, I, I was considering making George, you know, fall off of the uh, the building. You know, you know, like he could fall off of, uh, you know, the buildings in, in Rampage, but um, you know, you know, it, it's uh, at some point you got to stop. Yeah, another thing about this, um, you know, uh, application is that it basically runs in full screen windowed mode. And so that means that, um, you know, even though behind the scenes, I think that, you know, Windows uh, Presentation Foundation is it's using, you know, Direct3D, but um, like N NVIDIA Shadow Play, for example, isn't going to be able to capture this because it can only capture, you know, uh, you know full screen exclusive mode, uh, you know, programs. So I couldn't use Shadow Play to uh, capture this, unfortunately. Yeah, and in terms of resolution to, I mean, just because of the size of everything and just kind of, you know, how I wanted to lay it out, you know, it ended up being, you know, 1080p essentially. And so I'm sure, you know, you're thinking, well, if you have an arcade cabinet and you have a, you know, old CRT monitor in there and you got, you know, 640 by 480 interlaced, best case scenario, there's really not enough room for this. And that's true. And so, um, yeah, I mean, going forward, you know, even for arcade cabinets, I'm probably just going to be using one of those NVIDIA G-Sync monitors, you know, so all of the games, um, you know, you know, update smoothly at the proper refresh rate, uh, just because, you know, just maintaining um, and, and and even finding CRTs that are actually in good condition at this point, it, it's really, you know, it's really getting to be a lost cause. So I'm probably just going to give up there and just jump on the LCD bandwagon. Uh, before, I couldn't really stomach it, you know, because all of the games would be you know, stuttery and uh, choppy, running at the wrong refresh rate. But with those G-Sync monitors, uh, yeah, and the fact that we have, you know, HLSL, yeah, you're not really losing much. So the last thing I want to talk about um, for this front end um, is the fact that you notice that you kind of see a weird mix of things here. You know, you have Guacamele, Guardian Heroes, Doom, Earthworm Jim. Um, it, you, know, you know, it's because this thing was set up so that all the games are basically just read in from an XML config file. And in that XML config file, you can just put in the binary you want to run, you know, any, you know, uh, parameters you want to pass it, you know, its location and all of that. And, and it'll basically just run it. And, and it's just going to read in the XML file in the order that you put the XML nodes in there. 
And the thing I like about this is that you can really just use this for anything. You know, I can launch Doom from it. I can launch Mame from it. I can launch Guacamelee from it. I don't even care. You know, if it's a binary, I can launch it. And that's really what I wanted because, you know, I'm not so, you know, concerned about, um, you know, just being able to run, you know, MAME games or whatever else. You know, you know, I like a wide variety of games, so I want to be able to run that. And that's one of the reasons I put this together, actually, because I wasn't really happy with the way a lot of the uh, front ends that I saw out there, how they handle, you know, game list. You know, I see a lot of them where they kind of break them up into systems, and you select a system, and then you select games, or you have multiple game lists that you create. But at the end of the day, you know, there's maybe 150 games that I like, and this is, you know, having played games basically since, you know, they were invented. Um, and, and given that, you know, who cares, right? I mean, um, I, I can basically fit all the games I'm actually going to play, you know, just in one simple list. And the other thing, too, that I like about an arbitrary list is that it gets around some of the issues that you have with just kind of, you know, logically and uh, programmatically, you know, sorting things. I mean, like, just as an example here, you can see on the screen, we see Metal Slug, Metal Slug 2, Metal Slug X, Metal Slug 3. Now, alphabetically, this is a complete train wreck, right? Uh, but uh, because I can just put the games in any order I want to in my config file, that's how they're going to appear there. So I can have, you know, my, uh, you know, games appear in the order that they, you know, should be grouped, even if it doesn't necessarily work alphabetically or, or whatever else. Uh, I'm sure, you know, some front ends, you know, let you do some of that stuff, but I just wanted something that was just really straightforward, you know, I mean, editing an XML file, it's no big deal, and um, it's really easy to update, you know, I don't have to worry about, you know, stuff like, um, you know, proprietary DAT files and, you know, things like that for my game list. I, I really just didn't want to deal, you know, with anything like that. Well, I hope you enjoyed taking a look at this front end. And if you're interested in uh, using it or you know looking at the source code for it or any of that, you know just let me know and I can uh, you know give you that. I don't know if I can actually distribute this whole thing because you know the art that I'm using in here obviously is you know Capcom and you know Bally Midway and you know. Uh, you know, it belongs to, it's copyrighted material, so I don't really think that I can distribute that, so it's really just kind of my, you know, own personal little thing, but, um, yeah, if you're interested in the code, you know, I, I can, uh, uh, you know, hook you up with that.